So good morning, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining another edition of the Cube Learning Train the Nation webinars. Um, today's webinar is all around um, apprenticeships, so I'll do my best to talk you through all the training solutions that we uh, that we offer. So a bit of an introduction on myself. Um, my name is Jordan Commander. Um, I work within the Cube Business Development Team. Um, I've been within the further education sector for about seven years now. Um, my role at Cube is to work countrywide with a number of our customers to support them to look at their training needs um, and then pretty much implement any sort of training programs um, that would be relevant to, to their goals. Just a brief introduction to Cube Learning for anybody who doesn't, doesn't know much about us. Um, we're an independent training provider based down in Oxford. Um, majority of our staff work um, remotely, uh, myself included, I live up in Sheffield. So in terms of, like I said, what we'll talk about today, um, it's all about the apprenticeships, but just a, a brief background on some of the other qualifications and, um, you know, sort of solutions that we have available. Um, we do a number of pre-employment courses. Um, we have a team that's uh, dedicated to the pre-employment side. Similarly with uh, the traineeship um, route, we have an office based in Bradford, um, which is our hub for traineeships. Um, we have a number of short courses as well. Um, and we also have an e-learning um, solution, which is called Cube Vision. I believe that our head of business development Vision did a webinar, I think it was earlier this week. Um, so obviously, if you wanted to to know a little bit more about that, um, you could you could review that one. Just a little bit more again about Cube. Um, we currently support over three and a half thousand apprentices um, across um, a number of sites countrywide. We are one of the largest independent providers in the country um, and rated within the top ten providers on Rate My Apprenticeship. We do a large um, part of our offering in the apprenticeship sector within the care services. So it was quite a, a very you know, a big thing for us to win the care, care services apprenticeship provider 2019. Um, like I said, something that we're, we're really proud of. Um, um, you know, like I said, we work with a, a large number of care, care companies throughout, throughout England. This is just a little snapshot for people to see um, some of the employers who trust us. Um, we do run a number of pilot qualifications with these and we use them for some trailblazers. So they do obviously work very closely with us. Um, I work very closely with DHL and OCS, for example, um, and a number of my, my colleagues work with a number of the other employers who do trust us, um, again, countrywide to, um, to develop further qualifications and implement them. Just thought I'd share quickly with you all um, one of our case studies. We do love a case study at Cube. Um, this is from Caroline at John Lewis. Um, and she, she just picked on a number of the things that, that we uh, support them with in terms of the open days, um, etc. And pretty much how we we progress students and we review them um, as we go through. So I'll just give you a quick 10, 20 seconds to have a have a little read through uh, through that case study. So onto Cube Learning's values. Um, we look at these as a company, not just for what we deliver to our employers and students, but what we look at in staff as well and how we work internally with each other. One of the big ones that stands out on, uh, on there at the minute, certainly over the last six to seven months, is our openness to change. We've had to work very closely with our employers, our students um, and colleagues internally as well to ensure that we were open to the change. Um, and you know, like I said, due to COVID, how we've ensured that our students and employers continue to receive the same same service that they would have done pre-COVID. We've we was quite lucky in the sense that we had a number of remote options available, 
Um, so we seem to have transitioned through the change quite easily. Um, but like I said, it, it's quite a standout one on there. Like I said, I'm not going to talk you through all of our values, um, but it does just show that we try to stick to these values um, as much as possible. So we have in Cube what we call our steps to success. So on this next slide, shows you effectively where we would work with various individuals and you can almost jump onto that 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 slide uh, you know at any point in terms of the steps to success you could you could come in at the level three apprenticeship and hopefully our aim is to then progress you on to the fours and fives and sixes other than that obviously we can look at the pre-employment and then that obviously our view is to help you progress through the first four on this slide are blanked out at the minute um, because with today we're just going to talk about the apprenticeships. I think further towards the end, um, there are some further webinars and webinars that have maybe already happened. So I can do is if there are anything that anybody is interested in in terms of the pre employment side or the traineeship side, for example, um, I can point you in the right direction for those. So what is an apprenticeship? So an apprenticeship is it's a workplace learning program pretty much. It's now we've moved to standards and we've moved away from frameworks and that's not just Cube, that's everybody within the industry. Um, all the standards are delivered by, or sorry, designed by the uh, specialists within the industry. Um, so it's really relevant to the student and the, the job that they actually do. Um, I think the second point on here is one that's very important. So it states there that it's open to anybody at any age, at any level. I think there needs to be sometimes more education, and I think that's where I come in as my role. Um, apprenticeships often are thought of as junior levels, level twos, um, anybody who is maybe 16 to 21. And um, that's where your apprenticeships would be would be delivered. But that's not true anymore. I know to be honest, I started an apprenticeship back in 2012, left college and started as, as an apprentice. I think for myself at that time, it was still thought about as, like I said, that the younger people, it was more aimed at your, your administrators, um, your level twos in adult care, um, and maybe somebody looking to go into construction, for example. Whereas now, we have the standards, the very job specific, the there to support people and develop people. It's about discussing with people at all levels that there are role, that there are qualifications there, apprenticeships there, that will develop their knowledge and their understanding. And then we'll hopefully give them the opportunity to, to promote and develop their skills within that, that job role. What does an apprenticeship involve? Um, there's four key or core elements, if you like. Um, that's the skills, knowledge and behaviours that that individual would need to demonstrate in order to be able to complete and effectively pass that apprenticeship level and qualification. Um, there is also an element of functional skills in English and maths. That is only for people who don't have any prior attainment. So what I mean by that is if if the, if the individual holds um, a GCSEs or equivalent um, in English and maths, they wouldn't need to do their functional skills again. But there is also um, an initial skills assessment. So it states there to confirm suitability. So it's, it's used for a number of reasons. Um, and there is a slide further down that will um, that will go into more depth on this. Um, and what it does is it will look at where the student has knowledge at the moment um, and, and then it will show the knowledge that they need to to demonstrate and develop in order to get towards their end point assessment. So an apprenticeship is completed within working hours. Um, we do build into all of our qualifications the fundamental British values and safeguarding. Um, and as they go through, as the student progresses through the qualification, as you can see um, further down, we do continuous performance and progression reviews. That is in line with the um, initial skills assessment that I will discuss um, further down. When a student has got to the stage where they completed all their work, 
Um, they've done everything that they that is required of them. Um, they enter Gateway. At this point, we get them ready for their endpoint assessment. So the next three, I think it's three or four slides. Um, I'll just briefly take you through. I won't read them all because <laughs> there's quite a number there. Um, as I think I touched on earlier, health and social care is our biggest offering in the sense that not in terms of the, the amount of qualifications we offer, um, but the amount of students on programme with us. Um, as you can see on the right, we've just snapshotted a number of the, uh, the customers that we work with countrywide and we deliver all of those qualifications into each of those. Similarly for the business services, um, a number of qualifications again ranging from you know probably more your junior level at customer service level two um, right up to the operational departmental manager level five and your chartered manager level six. Again down the right is some of the, the um, employers that we work with. I work closely with the OCS um, and I do a number of information sessions for their students or potential students, um, which talks them through the program that they would be interested in um, and gives them a bit of information and a background to what to expect from, from that program. We have a small retail offering, um, anything from level two, two up to the level four retail manager. Um, obviously, for business services, we have the team leader level three which is the same level as the retail team leader. Um, but obviously the retail team leader is more specific to a role um, of somebody within that role, for example. Our warehousing and logistics offer um, seems to be um, growing. We do have two new qualifications that I believe should be, um, should be launched fairly soon. That's the express delivery operative level two. Um, and the transport and warehouse operations supervisor level three. Um, as you can imagine, the, the, uh, the need for the express delivery operative level two seems to have gone through the roof during COVID. Um, trying to get an online shop is quite difficult. <laughs> Don't think there's enough drivers out there for the, uh, for the delivery operative. So I think that, you know, continuing um, and moving forward, I think that's going to be quite a, um, a big qualification for the warehousing and logistics um, sector. We do also have um, a hospitality offering. Um, we made the decision, I think you made the decision probably 18 months ago now to partner with a company to deliver this. So we partnered, as you can see at the bottom, with the performance learning group um, to deliver our hospitality qualifications. Predominantly, our qualifications in this sector are actually enrolled within the care sector. So most of the groups that we work with, you know, on the right side, Avery, Caring Homes, Priory, for example, they all have um, kitchen staff enrolled on the various hospitality qualifications that we deliver alongside um, PLG. So what I'll do now is just quickly talk you through all of the different levels um, for people who don't have, you know, an extensive knowledge of apprenticeship. So as I stated earlier on, the level two apprenticeship is what's known as the intermediate apprenticeship, um, equivalent to probably five GCSEs, for example. And that, like I said, would be um, an entry level role um, looking at maybe a customer service admin type of role or in the, uh, the care sector, maybe your adult care worker level two, somebody who's new to that industry um, and would require, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge to be delivered. The level three um, is what's known as the advanced apprenticeships. Um, they're equivalent to two A levels. Um, some of our qualifications, such as the team leader level three, um, team leader supervisor level three is um, has sorry a um, embedded level three diploma so that's the ILM so that's the Institute for Leadership and Management diploma so that that's also um, worked on alongside the team leader supervisor if that student wishes to. Um, it says further down obviously that the applicant should ideally hold five GCSEs that is 
um, you know, that, that is looked at on a case by case basis. So, for example, if somebody was in a team leader role within a company or within a care home, wherever it might be, they may not have done a level two apprenticeship um, and they might not have five GCSEs. But when we complete the enrollment, we, we look at their knowledge, we complete an initial assessment that gives us an overall sort of basis as to where that student is at. Um, so obviously based on their, the, uh, the scores that they achieve in the initial assessments, we don't always need that person to, to hold them GCSEs or have completed a level two. Like I said, ideally they do, but it's not, it's not an overall rule. So the level fours and fives um, are known as your higher apprenticeships. <clears throat> um, we deliver a number of level fours and fives. Um, the fives, I guess, are more aimed towards your senior management, um, your operational departmental management qualification, for example, is, is looking at a more senior role and a strategic role within a business. Um, your level four, um, for example, within business services might be your uh, data analyst and project manager. So it's a, a bit more of a niche um, niche role that, um, that we'd look at for that qualification. <coughs> your level six and seven apprenticeships are known as your degree apprenticeships. Um, we currently are partnered with the Open University to deliver these qualifications. Um, so like I said there, it's the equivalent to a foundation degree or a bachelor's dependent on the programme that is uh, that is selected. Um, and like I said, we have that open relationship with the, uh, with the Open University to enrol students where necessary. So just quickly, I wanted to talk about the um, return on the investment. I think I'm not going to go through all four of these. You will receive, um, I believe, the pod, uh, this uh, webinar when it's uh, when it's finished. Uh, but the two I wanted to touch on for me, um, the staff retention is a great stat. Um, the 70 percent of apprentices remained with their employer for nearly two years after completing their apprenticeship compared to 58 percent of people who don't complete an apprenticeship. Um, that, that you know for me is a is a significant increase. But the main one I like is the upskilling. Um, I think the next few slides will talk about how to fund apprenticeships and the various ways they can be funded. Um, so as it states there, there are you know, a cost effective way. If you have a, a skills gap within, within your business or you know, within a care home, for example, it is a lot more cost effective to look at how you can utilise an apprenticeship programme to upskill that individual rather than going down the recruitment, um, recruitment avenue. So just before I touch on the um, how we fund apprenticeships and the various ways we can support with that, the government recently announced due to COVID um, the incentives that are available. So this is to re really say to kickstart um, employers recruitment again um, and get the economy moving. So as you can see on the uh, <clears throat> on the screen right now, employers receive financial incentive for each new apprentice they recruit. So the age bracket 16 to 18, the employer would receive 3,000 pounds, 19 to 24 is 2,000 and 25 plus is 1,500. That can be any level, any qualification. So it could be that um, an employer brings in an admin apprentice at 16 to 18, for example, or it could be that a care home brings in um, a new home manager and they go on to a level five qualification. Anybody who is brought in, and enrols on an apprenticeship is eligible for the incentives. The incentive window um, is already open. So we opened on the 1st of August, I believe, um, and it runs to the 31st of January 2021. So like I said, anybody, any level within that time frame that's new to the business and enrols on any apprenticeship, um, the company would receive 50% after 90 days and then um, the, the further 50% is paid to them on day 365. <clears throat> As I touched on um, a few moments ago, um, how are the apprenticeships, how do we fund them? So if you're a non-levy payer, um, so you don't pay into the apprenticeship levy, you don't have a, a salary bill of over three, um, three million per year, um, you can co-fund with the government. So the government 
others 95 um, percent of the cost of the apprenticeship so they'll fund 95 percent of that um, and you as the employer would then be required to pay the the further five percent and that can be paid in a number of ways that can be paid up front that can be paid in uh, equal installments um, and that's something that you know as an employer in cube that can be uh, that can be discussed <coughs> however over the well realistically probably over the last 12 months cube have worked with um, a number of our organizations that we work with um, and they've committed to transferring levy funds to us for any employer that, that is eligible that fits into that non-levy category. Um, since April last year, the um, employers have been able to transfer up to a quarter of their funds. So, like I said, we have access to um, various organisations that have, like I said, have committed to, to Cube and anybody enrolling on a Cube qualification, we can try and link them up with the transferring organisation to uh, to fund fund their apprenticeships. Obviously, the last way to fund would be if you're a levy payer. So if you pay into that levy pot, um, if there are funds available in there, you know it's a very straightforward process. You have a digital apprenticeship service account, um, and each month, if anybody new enrolls, we just upload them to that account and agree. Um, obviously, the costs are agreed for each each student, um, and obviously the funds then are deducted from your from your levy account on a monthly basis. So the employer journey, we love a good roadmap at Cube. Um, so this is this is one uh, realistically where I come in. Um, this this is pretty much my role in a nutshell. Um, <clears throat> so it starts with a bit of a getting to know you introductory chat. Um, that's when we would do a bit of a needs analysis what you know what are you looking at for for your employees um, where do you have um, training gaps um, from there when we identify what you would be looking for um, we can design the program um, so obviously we have the standards currently um, and all students need to ensure that they meet the criteria on the standard so they can demonstrate the overall knowledge for the standard but there are various things that we can do um, to move that around or to add in various bits. Um, just as a small example, I know that we, we did some work with one of our customers last year and there was going through a bit of a culture change. So we added in um, an element of around culture change and we, we designed one of the modules to look at how um, their staff in a management level um, could think about the culture change and how it affects them and how it affects their team. So, as I said, there's various things that we can do <coughs> to, um, to ensure that the program is best designed for your staff. We then agree on a bit of a roadmap. Um, so pretty much um, time scales, um, you know, sort of areas that we're looking at, um, everything about the logistics of the qualification at that point. We then move to the program rollout. So at this point, I can support in doing open days, information sessions for managers, etc. Um, we do have um, a great marketing team as well who can provide some uh, really, really good marketing that we can push out to, to the employees within the business. Um, and we just, uh, you know, at that point, support you to to ensure that we get the right people on the programs. So from there, after we have uh, we've got the people, we've got them, so the students, we've got them on board. Um, they're progressing nicely with their qualifications. My job is to complete regular reviews um, with whoever the account manager would be within within the employer. Um, so I would send a report monthly, which gives some really good information. It shows you the progress of the student. It shows you their their recent review of the their last session with the tutor. Um, and it's just a good visual for you, you know, for, for you as an employer to see um, how the how your staff are progressing. And then also celebrate success. Um, that's a key point that I work with some of my clients for. I think sometimes not just within this sector, but most things in life, we look at, you know, things that are not working, whereas we don't always celebrate success and things that have gone well. So, I, you know, I try and push where students are excelling, um, we try to push the uh, the success, I guess, and 
again, our marketing team do a number of posts on social media, exa for, for example. Um, and we have our CUBE Awards every year where we, we celebrate students and employers. And obviously we have the regular views again that just be um, with myself or uh, a colleague um, to look at again how the programs are working but what what are your future plans okay we know we've we've analyzed you know we've we've seen one one aspect that you would require in terms of training what you know are there any other, you know future needs and how can we support um, with those so 20 percent off the job training <clears throat> so each apprenticeship standard um, now requires the student to undertake 20% off the job. Most, most people will see that and think, you know, panic and think I can't afford to let my staff member have one day a week, for example, off work. It doesn't always work out like that. Um, there are a number of things that contribute to the 20% off the job. Um, and our tutors have a log of the off the job hours that each student completes. Um, so it, generally we, we find that students complete the hours needed um, relatively straightforward. But what I'll do, if hopefully it works, um, I'll catch my breath and what I'll do is I'll give you two minutes to watch um, the 20% off the job video. As part of the new apprenticeship standards, employers need to ensure that their apprentice receive 20% off the job training. This means that by their endpoint assessment, 20% of their apprenticeship programme occurs outside of their normal duties. Many of our employers are worried that A, will this mean that the employee is away from their job for too long and productivity will suffer? B, do they have to go into a classroom each week to meet the requirement? C, do the hours have to be equally spread each week? And D, how on earth do we begin to start measuring this? Consider these examples. Lisa is a retail apprentice she has weekly training with interactive feedback while she learns to use a core piece of equipment. Learning how to use this equipment forms part of the knowledge, skills and behaviours she needs to complete her apprenticeship. This would count as off-the-job training. Ayo is a management apprentice. The majority of his job is desk-based at his computer. He has a suite of on-demand learning including high-quality videos, animations, check learning questions, quizzes, case studies and external resources available to him. This is also supported by face-to-face -face learning. Ayo's employer likes that they can track his progress as he learns at his own pace and he has the flexibility to use quieter periods of work to access his distance learning. A record of Ayo's distance learning is automatically recorded so the training provider can monitor his progress and evidence his training. At Cube, we are ensuring the best possible practice and measurement of success all the way through the apprenticeship programme. We will be completing off-the-job training logbooks, reviewing progress monthly, offering suggestions and opportunities to ensure that all apprentices are benefiting from learning in this way. If in doubt, please just ask. So I hope that was useful, um, like I said, in the sense of just clearing up some of the um, concerns, I guess, that employers might have around the 20% off the job training. Well, we'll just run through now um, the student journey. We've been through, obviously, the employer journey um, and how my role supports to get to this stage. <clears throat> Um, so the first part is the programme selection. So as we've said, we've, we've identified the need within the business as to where they, um, they, they, like I said, they have the need and what qualifications they want to do. Um, but at this point, we would have hopefully people coming forward within the organisation or the employer identifying people that they wish to, uh, to enrol on qualifications. We then work with you to ensure um, that they're on the right programme. So whether that be at the team leader level, at the operational management level, um, are they in a more of a business admin role or a customer service role, for example, just to make sure that we get that right program. We then look at the application. So we preferably have, uh, we do have our own application form that we can share with employers or alternatively, we can, you know, we can create one um, or you might already have your own. Um, so all we really need at this stage is um, key details of that student, so names, um, 
contact details, line manager information, etc., um, job roles. So as long as we have all that, what we can do is we can get them set up on our systems, um, which they are then allocated um, an individual tutor to then move forward with the uh, with the program. So as I mentioned a little while back, <clears throat> in terms of the uh, skills assessment, this is something that is done on enrolment. So enrolment has a three three stage um, sort of process. I know the next slide actually is around the enrolment process, so I'll not go into that yet. We'll just touch on the skills assessment. So this is a brief overview of um, the skills assessment that we complete with all apprentices upon enrolment. So they're all made specifically for that apprenticeship. So all, obviously all skills assessments are relevant to the qualification. On enrolment, the student would be asked a number of questions from their tutor um, regarding the knowledge and the skills that they would already have. Um, the tutor would then probe into these answers from the student um, and we would hopefully at the start find out, as you can see on the, the picture to the right, the, on the basically this, this is showing you the second assessment. They still have high, high and moderate learning needs for, for certain areas. We would hope that the first is generally all high and moderate. There will be some aspects of limited learning, but it would show us basically where the students would need to, to develop and um, which areas for the for the tutors to to uh, to look at in more depth. So this then gives you an example. What we do at four equal instalment start qualification um, is we do another assessment. So as you can see, towards the middle, um, the closer the line is, the higher the development need. So I think the first one there is in a, a black solid line. So most of the um, the areas that we'll be looking at are relatively close to that central central line. Um, and as you can see, as we go through then to assessment two, three, and four, the knowledge of that student grows. So they are asked the same questions. The student would probe into them questions again, um, and it would then show the student. We share this with the line manager and this is how we can see their progress throughout the qualification and this is what we would use to get students ready for their endpoint assessment so we would need to see students pretty much um, on the fourth assessment that all of them them lines towards the outer outer end So as I briefly touched on, um, as I got ahead of myself, um, the enrolment and the functional skills assessment. So the three stage enrolment is the um, enrolment paperwork, skills assessment and their functional skills assessment. As I did say again earlier, if, if people have exemptions, they wouldn't do the functional skills, um, but they would still need to to sit the initial assessment so we can again gauge what sort of level um, they are working at. We then commence the learning with the skills tutor. So the tutors deliver the qualification a number of different ways. Um, pretty much at the minute is remote due to COVID, but obviously our, you know, our, our main way to deliver that is by uh, is by face to face learning, coaching, etc. And then they just work their way through the qualification um, and through the various modules with the tutor. This is again another brief video that we've got um, on our learner management system, which is called Canvas. Again, hopefully this this works. Um, so I'll play you this video, which gives you a bit of a, a brief overview of, uh, of the system we use and how it supports the students. Welcome to this short demonstration of our LMS or our online learning management system where your employees and our students are able to continue or progress their learning between visits with our skills tutors. Upon signing up, a student will be sent an email welcoming them to their course, allowing them to set their own password and continue their learning from day one. Once signed up, students can log in via the homepage and request a password change if they need to do so. Having logged in, students will arrive at the dashboard on the left hand side, students will notice throughout that there's intuitive navigation, allowing them to navigate around the platform quite simply and effectively. But if students want to dive straight into their learning, simply clicking on one of these tiles or selecting the course option and the course of choice 
will allow them to open the learning of their choice. Having arrived on their course, students will be welcomed by a homepage, describing what it is they're about to undertake and providing them access to support resources and options to either start or continue their learning. Each course is designed to provide students with the ability to learn at their own pace and allows you to provide students with some off the job learning. Each module or subject topic has an overview explaining what the student can expect to learn, pages of learning which supply students with learning opportunities that are aimed to complement the learning that's provided by the skills tutor, with each learning activity providing guidance on how long it should take to complete. Students are able to access these before, during or after their face to face delivery sessions and also have the opportunity to complete a learning knowledge check, which allows them not only to check how they're getting on, which also provides them with feedback to help them improve on any areas that are identified. As mentioned previously, students are able to learn at a pace, time and on a device that suits them. By identifying which areas of knowledge have been completed and by completing their knowledge check activities, students can simply return to the module section, which will identify where they left off and where to go to next. Students will be able to review their results by selecting grades in their course navigation and where available have access to assignments and tasks which can be used as evidence as part of their e-learning portfolio. For further information, please contact your CUBE representative. We'll be more than happy to help. So I hope that gave a, um, a good overview. Um, and I think as, as the, you know, touched on in the video, it complements the face-to-face -face teaching and learning. Um, so as, uh, as it was mentioned, that if there's anything that a student would need, um, even after that face-to-face um, that -face visit with the tutor, um, that's what the system is there for. It's there to, to, to give all that knowledge to the student and give them access to anything that would support them through the qualification. We're continuing on with the student journey. Um, quarterly reviews and skills assessments. So as we as we spoke about earlier in the skills assessment, they would then have them then reviews. Um, I would at this point obviously still be in touch with the uh, with the employer um, and just ensuring that progress is uh, is moving along nicely um, and the student has uh, pretty much everything they need to uh, to complete. We then get the student ready for gateway. Um, so at this point, um, we will have assessed them right through. And like I said, the skills assessment will complement that. We should get to a point where um, we can see that they have the knowledge, um, but it would literally be a case at this point of prepping the student for the endpoint assessment um, and making sure that they're comfortable and that they can demonstrate the uh, the knowledge and skills needed um, pretty much to be able to pass that that assessment at the end. There are a number of, of different um, aspects to the, the endpoint assessment that I'll touch on on the uh, on the next slide, but basically it's between a professional discussion um, and dialogue, which is pretty much an interview and it will cover all the knowledge and skills and behaviours um, that I mentioned that are required earlier on. Um, and there are also different aspects such as um, workplace projects um, for various qualifications. <coughs> When the student and employer and tutor are all happy that you know we can we can go for the endpoint assessment, we have a cube. We have a number of uh, contacts um, and chosen endpoint assessments, for different qualifications. Um, so the tutor and ourselves would would ensure that that runs smoothly. Um, everything's booked. Um, they'd continue to give um, coaching on the uh, the endpoint assessment. Although by this point all of the, the work needed would have been completed. So the visits would, would just be on prepping for EPA, making sure that they're happy and that they're, they're comfortable with what to expect from, uh, from the EPA. As I mentioned, um, three components, um, a written knowledge test, um, generally multiple choice questions and extended answers. Um, some qualifications come with the workplace project and presentation. Um, and again, that'll be discussed between the student and tutor as to what they do that project on. Um, and then they also have a professional dialogue, which, which is um, basically an interview um, with the endpoint assessor where they would just ask um, various questions and that, that student would need to demonstrate the knowledge that they have learned throughout the qualification in order to pass. 
We then get to the graduation point. Um, so the student would receive certificates. Um, hopefully we would, you know, at that point celebrate some sort of success. Um, and obviously they, they may also be um, put forward to the, the CUBE awards, for example, based on based on their journey through the qualification and their, their success. I think I've touched on um, a number of the additional support um, tools that we offer um, as, a, as a training provider, um, but I'll briefly run through some now. As I mentioned, we have a great marketing team um, and I generally always ask them the very last minute for some marketing, but they always seem to pull it together for me. Um, we can brand up various posters, um, flyers and booklets that we have. Um, we can brand them up and I think as you can see on the screen, um, we've done that for various various employers that we've worked with um, pretty much just to, to give it the feel for them and when it's passed out to their employees, it, it feels like it's something internal as well to uh, to get involved in. So it, it, it generally does complement the the initial patient um, stage at that point is uh, it's very, very good for that. We also have engagement days. So as I said, as my role um, at Cube is to to hold these engagement days where necessary. Um, I've been doing some um, remotely and virtually for the last six months due to COVID. Um, I think the last one I held uh, face to face was for Matalan in March, um, literally just before COVID kicked in. Um, so yeah, it's something that we can do and we can do that for students um, so they can see how their program is going to run, but also we can do that for managers so they know what support um, need, is needed to support that student through an apprenticeship because obviously that they will be a key part of um, how that student progresses. And again, I think I touched on it <clears throat> throughout. We enjoy um, celebrating success. Um, our marketing team look after our social media pages and they, they regularly post updates of students um, completing, for example. We also hold um, monthly student and employer awards. Um, and as I mentioned, we have our annual CUBE Awards ceremony, which unfortunately this year um, was held virtually due to COVID. But fingers crossed for next year, we can uh, we can get back to, to that event. So on that note, what I will do is I'll just play you a quick video of our CUBE Awards from 2019. Hi, I am Colin Jackson and I am the host of the 2019 CUBE Awards. I'm here officially to welcome you to the CUBE Awards for 2019. I feel it's going to be a fantastic night. This is the second time I've been here, so I'm very excited to be invited back to host these awards. We're here to celebrate the achievements of our students, employers, and I have to say the nomination process does get tougher every year. So massive congratulations to everybody that's made it this far, and also not just to the students, but to their mentors and their tutors that help them get here as well. And the winner is DFS! We're so proud to win the award. A lot of companies have seen the apprenticeship levy as a negative. We see it as a positive because it's an opportunity for us to continue to build on uh, the skills with our existing workforce. And the winner is Priory Group. They're one of the best providers in the country. They've got a track record. They've obviously worked well with us in terms of our apprenticeship numbers and they've managed them quite well. 
meet our expectations and obviously our own apprentices' expectations. So it's great to be recognised and work with Cube in the long term as well. And the winner is John Lewis Partnership. I am really, really excited and really privileged because John Lewis have just started working with Cube and I think we've got a great future. To work as an employer with Cube has just been a really great journey. I just think they're a really honest, hard-working company. Everyone I hear who's done an apprenticeship, when you talk to the employers, when you talk to the people who've done the apprenticeship, they're way ahead of anyone else that's been in a classroom, whether it's in a college or a university. You hear of degree apprentices who say they're at least two years ahead of the graduates that come in. And the winner is Daniel Clark. And the winner is from Bradford Bathrooms, Buffy. As you go ahead and do the traineeship, Cube Learning is the best to do any sort of traineeship with. And the winner is Zoe Hughes. And the winner is Donna Collin. Help me achieve my career goals. I've already had two or three promotions since I started. I've really grown as a person and I've learned a lot of really good skills. And the winner from Brighter Kind is Emma McMillan. Keep learning, it's the best position I've made. You won't regret it, just go for it. Apprenticeships and traineeships are good because you're getting hands-on experience. Because yes, it's good learning about the theory, but sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes you really need to know what it's really like being in the field. The events like this, certainly the Cube Awards, are so good because it shows appreciation for people's hard work. And sometimes in life you just go by and nobody seems to appreciate what you do. An event like this just brings it all alive, galvanises people and just inspires them to go on and on. Thank you very much. I hope that you were uh, you enjoyed watching that video. Um, I did forget to say at the start, to be honest, that if there was anybody who wanted to uh, ask any questions, <laughs> it's probably a bit late, but um, there was a Q&A window that you could have typed some in. Um, I do apologise for, for missing that out. <clears throat> just before um, I ask if there were any, any questions, just to point you in the the um to look at the other webinars that we've got coming up like i said if there's anything that we've discussed today um you will receive this i think you'll receive my contact details if you need to ask any questions but if you want to look at um any further webinars that go into the industry specifics such as the care and business services for example and um, there are further webinars for you to join so thank you um luke did we have any questions? I know that I missed that out, but uh, were there any questions that happened to come through? Yep, we've had a few. Um, the first one was a technical question, which I can address. Um, the videos that we had didn't have any audio on them, but um, all our attendees are going to get a recording of the webinar, so I'll make sure the audio is available on those. So if you, if you did miss out on the videos, um, you will yeah, get a recording of that. Lovely. And it'll all work there. Uh, the first question for you to test your knowledge. Um, a member of my team already has a level three industry specific apprenticeship qualification. Are they able to do another level three apprenticeship, but this time team leader supervisor apprenticeship? So, so can they do another of the same level if it's relevant to their job role? Yes, yeah, certainly. Obviously, we, we know if people have done something at college, for example, in business, you know, they wouldn't probably then do um, an administration qualification. but if somebody has done uh, that level three specific to their role previously, but now um, they're in a team leader role, for example, um, then yeah, definitely they can they can do at the same level um, as long as it's looking at something different. And you know, for that example, um, yeah, the team leader would be uh, would be something that they could definitely do. Yeah, good, good, excellent. And the second question. 
Are Cube able to adjust their visits to suit student rotors or working patterns? Yeah, so within our care industry, I know that we have, um, and I guess within care and all, all industries, including um, your warehousing and logistics, for example, people don't work nine five, um, and our tutors within them industries understand that, um, and they are happy to move around um, people's working patterns. So, for example, they may work, they may work a night every couple of weeks, and they may fit in um, four people at one home who's all on the same night shift, for example, or similarly in the warehousing um, and logistics sector, um, they they can work nights and later shifts, earlier shifts, whatever it might be. Um, yes, we are a company that works nine five, I guess, but we are also a company that works 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week when we have students who need to be seen. Excellent. Um, that's all the questions for you. Lovely. Well, uh, thanks for people uh, who did join. I think, as Luke said, you will you will get the uh, the copy of this webinar. And I do apologise that the the uh, we had no audio on the videos, um, but again, thanks for thanks for joining.